Hey there, Brian Davis, Home Improved Man. Uh, I have to uh, make these posts look better than they do. Now you can see in the back, right over there, um, I've already wrapped the, the one of the posts, and so I'm gonna go take you through the process of wrapping the second post, um, but I'm not just gonna leave it there. I wanna make it look a little bit uh, nicer. Uh, my goal, my aim, is towards gorgeous, and so I have uh, defined what gorgeous is going to be within my own head. Um, I am the final arbiter of gorgeous, uh, and so uh, I'm going to take you on that path. Now, the first thing that you have to do is, like I said, like I did on that first post, is you have to wrap the post. So this was uh, six by six, pressure treated. Um, not sure why they chose pressure treated, but they did. Uh, if the six by six were straight, and it were square, and it was a good piece of wood, wrapping it is fairly easy. You just go uh, a little bit bigger, and then you attach the, uh, the one-by material around it uh, with nails and, and glue and all that, and you're done. Because most uh, lumber that they build with is not straight or square, um, this one is twisted, uh, the one in back was really twisted, uh, but this one still has a twist to it. I started with the one in back because I wanted to find out how twisted it was. And so in order to have the final uh, shape of it square and straight, I have to take the, you know, the entire twist into, into consideration, and I ended up having to take, uh, I got an outside uh, width of eight inches. And so once you have your eight inches, I, I want this other post that's not as bad as the other one to be the same size. So now I've got an eight inch uh, piece of, of wood on each side. Now, when you determine the, the piece of wood on the outside, of course, you've got, um, it goes eight inches and then you have a three quarter inch piece on each side. And so the inside dimensions are six and a half. The dimension of this post is five and a half, which means then that my outside pieces are one inch larger than the piece that I'm attaching them to. And so I, I would, would not be able to, uh, even if it were straight, I would not be able to attach the outsides directly to it because at some point I'm going to have some overlap. So what we need to do then is to figure out one, what the footprint's going to be, both on the floor and also on the ceiling. And then two, where we're going to build out to make the space. Uh, so that's where a, you'll want to have a level, you'll want to make sure that, um, that you've got the, you know, the pieces that you need, uh, putting little, little blocks of wood up against the post or on the ground that you're going to be nailing to. And uh, then you just basically wrap the post. All right, I've put blocks uh, six blocks on the two sides that I'm building out a little bit, two on the bottom, two in the middle, two at the top, on this side and on the back side. So on the side facing you and then on this side back here, the, the wrap is going to be flush up against the post pretty much. And then on the other two sides, I've bulked it out a little bit. Now, when you put, down the, when you put in the blocks, you can't just measure in one place because, as I said earlier, you can't be sure the post is straight and true. And so you have to measure at each spot all the way up uh, on each side to make sure that it's going to be accurate. And you know, the way you do that is you take the... Uh, you place the board on one side. You put a level up against it to make sure that the board is straight and that's where it's going to be. And then you measure off of that board all the way up as you go. 
Now, of course, I've already painted the boards. There'll be some touch up, but most of the work is done. I've already cut them to size and I've already cut the angles on them uh, because I know that this is what I want the final uh, product to be or the final end uh, shape, final dimensions. And you want to have that 45 degree angle uh, on the ends of it so that the seams are on the corners, not on the, the edge of the board where you then have, it'll be then be visible. And so you want to make sure you've got a good table saw where you can cut a long board straight. Uh, I wouldn't recommend trying to cut this one by hand because anytime there's a little deviation or a shift or, or, or a drift, it's going to become very obvious in the end product. This one really, you either got to be very, very skilled with a hand saw, with a circular saw, or you need a table saw. And the better uh, the tool is, the, the more accurate it's going to be. So when, when it comes to putting everything together, I'm going to be using this. And what this allows me to do is to keep everything square. I've got three of these. And I'm able then to put each one of these blocks on a corner, pull it tight, and then use the, um, the screw to be able to get very snug in order to set it up. I'll be using glue on the seams and then nailing it into place. Uh, the glue really provides the, the most of the, the anchoring, the, the nails help hold it in shape. And then of course these will sit on uh, the, the post uh, as it dry, as the glue dries. As you go uh, pinning the boards in place, make sure you not only pin them to each other after you've glued the seams, the edges, but you also then pin them to the post itself so there's no movement around uh, the, the post. Uh, once you've got them all pinned in place, it's the, the, uh, the pins that hold, that hold it while the glue dries. Um, and so you can take the straps off and then let it sit uh, in this case, 24 hours, because that's the type of glue that I used, but if you're using a different type of glue, it'll be a different duration. Up next is we make it look, well first we'll, we'll uh, clean up the edges. 
the, the, where the seams come together, a little bit of glue, a little bit of gapping, uh, and then we'll go and uh, make it look like a, a more traditional uh, decorative column. The next step is to build the lower half of the corners. Like this. So I've already gone through and cut the pieces to length and I've cut the 45 degree angle on the one edge. And so then we will have these two pieces that come together like so. And so to make that happen, you turn the pieces upside down, create the, uh, or, or bring the, the cut edges, the 45 degree angle edges, flush. And tape them in place. Two pieces of tape to hold them there. And then one piece, long piece of tape along the whole seam. Make sure that the tape is well adhering or adhering adhering well to the wood. Then turn it upside down and you've got the piece like so. Now of course we have to hold it in place there. But before we do, we want to apply the glue. Only needs to be applied on one side. Like so. Then we make sure the glue is along the entire edge of the 45 degree cut. That it's fully covered and thick enough that there you want to see a little bit squeeze out when you bring two pieces together obviously when it squeezes out that's a sign that's too much but it's better to have a little bit too much than any that is too little bring it together and then we use the tape to hold it together Pull the tape tight. You want to make sure there's no gaps. Check the seam. Make sure it's straight. Make sure it's strong. Down there. Better to have the tape go all the way end to end because you don't want to have any gaps on the final product. You're doing, uh, you have one pillar, and so you'll have four of these uh, by the time you're done, and then give them the full 24 hours to dry before we do anything else with them, before you mess around with them. All right, quick chat about uh, lumber choices. Uh, the, the uh, quality of the lumber, the, the cost of the lumber, it can really vary job to job. You know, the, the, uh, when you're doing framing, uh, the 2x4s, the, uh, 2x6s two two that you typically use, it doesn't really matter a whole lot if they're um, not quite square or straight. But as you get more into this finished carpentry, it becomes more and more important. It does uh, improve the quality of the product when you take the time and you spend a little bit more money. Now, because this is being painted, uh, 
I'm not as worried about the, the pattern and the grain uh, or the, the, I don't need a particularly hard wood. So I'm still using pine, but I'm using uh, a select pine, I'm using the, you know, one of the higher grades of pine. There's not very many knots and it's mostly straight. Although if you noticed on this last board here, uh, I was a bit of a struggle because there was a little bit of a, a lift away one side to the other, trying to get them square. I hope that I've taken care of it. Um, I might need to do a little extra sanding on this one piece once I'm finished with it to make sure that it doesn't look uh, horrible. If I had been a little more careful in my selection of the wood, I probably could have avoided that. Um, and there, I haven't put it out yet, but I'll put out another video soon about the choosing wood and what you're looking for um, because straight, square, uh, and most importantly, when you're looking at wood, making sure that it's not twisted. That is the hardest one to try and uh, correct for. Uh, but again, I'll address that later. So these will sit for 24 hours, uh, and then we'll go on to the next step. Our tape's been removed, the glue is dry. We've got our four wrapped around the column back here, and we're ready to move on to the next step. Now, one thing to consider is do you want this base of the column to be parallel to the floor or horizontal? Subtle but important distinction when your floors are not flat and horizontal. Right now, My corner pieces that I've cut and glued together are 36 inches tall, just about exactly. But my floor is not horizontal. So if I lay these pieces on the floor, then there's gonna be a bit of an unevenness. They're gonna follow the shape of the floor. And on, on a post like this, it's not so important, but if you imagine a countertop, you're putting in the uh, cabinets and, and a counter in your kitchen, and the uh, floor is sloped. Well, if you have your cabinets along the floor and you don't adjust for that slope, well, you put an egg on that counter and it's going to roll in the direction of the slope because now your countertop has the same slope as the floor. And so on a countertop, you want to make sure it's perfectly horizontal regardless of the shape of the floor. I'm going to do the same thing here. Not as important. Uh, I don't think it'll ever be noticed, but I'm going to go ahead and do it anyway just because. And so what you do you place your pieces around the, the, the collar, make sure they're snug against it, and then you place level against it. And when you do so, or when I do so, I notice that the way that these floors line up, there's about an eighth of an inch. There's about an eighth of an inch. That's my height. And so I of course want to make sure that I check them all and make sure it's not a misreading, make sure that they're all moving in the same direction. And I've got two back here that I'm gonna trim down. One of the big one I think is an eighth of an inch, the other one's a slightly less. But once I trim them down, I should then have a perfectly horizontal top to this uh, portion of the um, uh, column that I'm making. All right, I've cut them down. I double check. And it looks pretty good. So now I'm going to secure them in place. I will use uh, both glue and nails and then allow that to dry. I have, once again, my uh, strap clamps that I'll be using to hold everything in place um, while it dries just to make sure it's stable, locked in, it's not gonna get bumped to or moved around.
glued, clamped, and nailed. And now we just let it dry. Now there's one thing I didn't mention earlier, which is that when you measure the level, the, the uh, horizontalness of everything, and you start cutting pieces, um, if you're cutting individual pieces, make sure that it goes back into the exact same location. You start uh, making sure that the corner piece is only now for that one corner that's been cut because you're cutting them to different lengths. You wanna make sure that they all end up in the right spot. Uh, all right, see you in the next little bit. Glue's all dried. We got the uh, verticals on the corner in place and so now we're gonna put the uh, horizontal pieces and one of the things you want to make sure of is that you measure each one individually. Don't measure one gap and then assume that all four are going to be the same because they definitely are not going to be. I had two that were the same uh, on the bottom pieces and then two that were completely different. Uh, I'm going to use two different sizes, top and bottom. This is my bottom and that one is going, that one is going to be the top. Um, it just creates a better visual effect. So now they get nailed into place. I'm not gonna bother with the glue because they're, the, the corner pieces being glued securely is going to really protect these pieces and make sure that they're not gonna move at all. Um, you could also have put these in place as you were gluing, especially if you're using a 24 hour glue, you can apply the glue, the adhesive, you can you know, get the, the boards in, in close, you can then put these into place and then now, whether you glue these or not, having everything put together at the same time will add a level of security. There's going to be one or two that have minor, very tiny little gaps on the edges. Um, just the nature of cutting is what it is. I mean, they're less than a 32nd of an inch gap. Um, but when we go to, uh, even the paint will be uh, thick enough to be able to fill in the gaps, so it's not a big deal at all. We got the, the boards, the horizontal boards put in, and now we're putting in the, uh, the internal tri trim to prettify it a little bit. Now, this first round, the, the first one that I attempted, I put the boards in, and I really didn't like the look of it. So, I went on back to my big box home improvement store to see what else they had. And when I did so, I found this, which I like a whole lot better. The, the inside decorative piece comes just about out to the edge. I think it does do a really nice job of uh, putting it in. I haven't nailed it in yet. I just put it. In, I just put it in there to see how it's going to look, uh, and now I will nail this one in, pull the other one out, which unfortunately I did nail in, but not a big deal because this being a bigger piece, even if I damage the um, the, the the wood behind, it'll be hidden by this piece here. And so, as you're looking for pieces of wood to fill this in, remember that this these boards are three quarters of an inch thick. And so having something that is close to three quarters of an inch um, is going to make it look a little bit nicer. And then of course you want to make it. Having a high quality miter saw in this situation is going to be helpful. Um, Getting exactly 45 degrees, making sure that uh, when you cut your pieces down to length that you get it exactly right. Um, you don't want anything that gets a little bit loose in how it puts the whole thing together, otherwise you're really going to struggle with making this look uh, correct, appropriate. Now before I go any further in this project, I want to say that I have uh, constructed this. All the material comes from your basic generic uh, home improvement bo big box store and if you really wanted to put together something really nice uh, go to your local lumber yard 
they will have material that's really designed for this type of work. To illustrate my point, I'm about to put the base in, uh, just to cover up the, the seam at the bottom, add a little bit more texture to it, and what I'm using is a doorstop. So this is what you will find um, when you close any of your interior doors. It rests up against a, a, a bit of wood that runs around the inside of your door frame, and it is this. But it's going to do a really nice job of, of what I want. Cover up the seam at the bottom, add just a little bit more texture, uh, and so it's, it's a great solution. We're going to put the cap on top. <clears throat> I've got two pieces that I'm going to use to do that. The first is that. And the second is that. Now this one I've built a little bit. I took two, I added it, made it a little bit wider, um, put in a, uh, a quarter inch, or I'm sorry, a half inch uh, piece to build it out so that what we end up with is something like that. And then that's going to wrap all the way around the top up here. You'll notice that there, there's a bit of a gap on this one. It doesn't go all the way to the far edge. It won't be necessary. This will be nailed down onto the base. This will be nailed to the base as well, and then back into the, into the post. This part is optional and you might be fine just with this piece and then adding the half inch to the back end of it. Uh, at this point, it's up to your preference as far as how you're going to treat this post. I forgot to turn on the uh, camera before I, uh, I uh, installed the uh, crown on the top of the column. So I'm going to give you a, uh, an after image of that. Pretty straightforward um, as far as the crown molding goes. The one thing I would uh, take note of <clears throat> is that I chose a small uh, crown. Uh, in fact, I think it doesn't even fall in the category of crown, it's so small. Um, and the reason why is because of the pillar above. On this side, you can see that it just, I'm sorry, the, the, uh, the beam above. But on this side, you can see that it, it just matches the beam. On this side, it overhangs a little bit, which I'm not a huge fan of, but I couldn't get uh, pieces any smaller. So if you've got more space, you can choose a bigger piece of crown to go around it. And of course, you can see some gaps on the corners and, uh, and uh, where it comes, where it meets the column. And those will be filled in uh, with caulk uh, when it comes time to finish up this work. So, this is what we have. And the reason why the <clears throat> top piece is white is that one I was able to purchase it primed. And a lot of this work down here I was not. Um, a few gaps here and there that still need to be filled in. We're ready to uh, prime. Before I give you the close-up tour of, of the work as completed, uh, just a quick note on, on finishing options. Uh, 
if you are very skilled with a miter saw and measuring and everything else and your joints are perfect and everything comes together seamlessly, you have any option you want. Do whatever you'd like. If, on the other hand, there are minor gaps that need to be filled, um, anything where uh, things do not fit perfectly, then when you go to fill them in, chances are it's going to be difficult to end up staining it and making it look nice. Because any sort of filler that you have, it's going to be difficult to match and in most cases it'll be fairly obvious, especially depending on the type of stain that you use. So, if your uh, woodworking skills are not exceptional, uh, plan on painting it. Because then you can use wood filler, you can use caulk to fill the gaps, and um, you end up with a very nice product. As a, there's a, an old saying among the carpenters, uh, caulk and paint make me the carpenter I ain't. And while it's a rather blunt way of putting it, there is a bit of truth to it, and that you can use caulk and paint to fix um, minor errors. We're done. Uh, we got the uh, final coat of paint on. Um, and as I had stated at the beginning of the, this little video here, uh, my goal was gorgeous, and then I feel like I achieved it. Maybe it's a little confident, a little arrogant, and I'm sure um, there are people out there that can do a much better job than I've done here. But compare this to uh, where we started, um, the, the nightmare that we had at the beginning, and it's a dramatic improvement. Uh, and I, th I feel like that this is achievable with a moderate amount of skill and, and tools that are maybe a little bit uh, beyond the basics, but not extravagant. You don't need to have the high-end tools or anything really uh, excessive. A good miter saw, uh, a sander, uh, a nail gun isn't necessary. You could do the whole thing with finishing nails. Uh, so yeah, it doesn't take a whole lot. Uh, and so I hope that you found this video helpful uh, and that you're able to uh, do some improvements around your own house that maybe move things in the direction of gorgeous, uh, or if not gorgeous, at least an improvement over where they were. Uh, thank you for watching and feel free to like and to share and uh, good luck with your next project. Thanks.